Welcome to Twin Chevy Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up Dolphin Emulator on Android. And I'll show you a few settings that could help improve the look and performance of some of the GameCube or Nintendo Wii games that you play. Dolphin on Android has come a long way since I tried it out a year ago and I'm very impressed with it this time around. Games like Skyward Sword are playable with some new controller mappings and the motion sensors have made games like Super Mario Galaxy and Skyward Sword so much better to play. If you want the ultimate GameCube Wii portable experience then I highly recommend the Android experience. But as always there are some caveats. You're going to need a decent phone. The website itself recommends a Snapdragon 700 or higher at a minimum, which means you'll probably need an 845 or higher for more intensive games, especially Nintendo Wii games. I use a Xiaomi 11T Pro with a Snapdragon 888 and I still get frame drops in Super Mario Galaxy 2 and some games aren't even playable. Also not every game is playable on Dolphin and emulation will never be 100% accurate. Now before we begin I hate doing this kind of thing so I'll be quick but 99% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel and I understand why. You get the information you need and you don't need me again. So I'm not going to ask you to subscribe although it will help but I am going to ask you to hit the like button if you find the information useful. Sorry to be that guy, let's get back to the tutorial. So let's install Dolphin on your Android phone. Start by going to the Google Play Store, type in Dolphin Emulator, then click Install. And when that's installed, just open the app. Enable usage statistics reporting, you can decide on this one yourself. And now we just need to add our games and ROMs, so press the plus sign in the bottom right corner. Find the folder that has your ROMs in, so mine's in ROMs, GameCube, and click use this folder. You can see all my ISOs are there, click allow, and that will begin importing all the games and ROMs from that folder. And whenever you drop a game in that folder, it will automatically put it in the emulator. I can see it is filling up with all my GameCube games. So we have three folders in the top left, we have GameCube in the middle, you tap that folder, that'll be all the Wii games, and then the folder icon here is all of the classic game wads and things like that. So I've got some N64 and Super Nintendo games here. We've got GameCube, Wii, Classic. Now you can pretty much just play games in the default settings like this now, but there are a few settings that I like to configure myself as well, and I'd like to go through them with you now. So press the settings cog, go to config, general what i like to do is i like to enable cheats because i use gecko codes and action replay codes every now and again i click allow mismatch region settings and change discs automatically so if i'm playing a game like metal gear solid twin snakes that has two discs when it needs the second disc it will automatically put that on and there'll be no pause in my gameplay i also change the fallback region to ntscu because i'll be playing the united states versions of the games if you mainly play games from europe then you're going to want to change that to the pow Version. That's it for general. Then we go to interface and I just make sure that screen orientation during emulation is set to landscape because I play most of my games in landscape. If you're playing games in portrait mode, then you're going to want to change it to portrait mode, but I much prefer the landscape mode. And if you don't see your game covers and box art automatically, then just check that download game covers from gametdb.com is ticked as well. That way all your games will look pretty on the interface. That's it from the config settings. Now we go to the graphic settings and then video backend. I always like to start in Vulkan just to check to see if it runs well in Vulkan. If it doesn't, then change it to OpenGL. It will entirely depend on your phone. Like I said, all phones react differently to this emulation and you're just gonna have to find out which backend is best for your GPU. For example, I play Super Mario Galaxy 2 and Twilight Princess in OpenGL and I play Skyward Sword and Super Mario Sunshine in Vulcan. It really does depend on the game and the phone. I like to click show FPS because I like to look at that type of stuff because I am an absolute nerd. And it also gives you a better sense of how the games are running. Shader compilation by default is set to specialize and that's gonna give you the best performance. But what I like is hybrid Uber shaders. Hybrid Uber shaders will help with stuttering and things like that during shader compilation and they'll have a minimal performance impact, but the results do depend on your video driver and what it is that is running your phone. So if you're having issues, I'd highly recommend that you change it back to specialized, but test out hybrid Uber shaders because it's a much better experience if you can get it running with it. I also click compile shaders before starting because this will get all the shaders that are already in your system 
together before the game starts, which will eliminate a lot of the stuttering, but it will take a bit of time for the games to load up as well. Sometimes it can take up to two to three minutes to compile all those shaders together. But the more you play the game, the more shaders that it'll compile for you before the game starts, and then the longer it will take for the game to launch, but the game will run a lot smoother. Aspect ratio, I like to have this on stretch to window, so it fills out my entire phone. But if you want a classic experience, then you can force 16 by nine, that'll give you the full widescreen experience, or you can just click auto, but games that do have a four by three aspect ratio, you'll be left with black bars at the side of your screen. And a lot of GameCube games, if you're playing GameCube games or Nintendo 64 games or classic games, a lot of them are going to play with 4x3, and some do have widescreen settings in the settings of the game itself as well. I like stretch the window because I like to have the game fill out the entire screen. I'm not too fussed about that. In the enhancements section, we have the internal resolution. Now this, I always set to one by native, but on a game by game basis. So some games on GameCube, you can run at 1080p, but you can set these settings for individual games. And I'll show you how to do that in a second, but always keep it at one by native because Nintendo Wii games are definitely not gonna run at 1080p. So there's no point in even trying. The same goes for all of these other effects like full scene anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering. A lot of these are going to make the games look a lot better, but it may affect the performance. So what I like to do is I like to start the game, see how it runs, if it runs well, or add a couple of these in, check the performance, and then I'll come back and make a few alterations individually to the game. Like I said, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So we'll go back, and the GameCube input and the Wii input section is where you will go when you want to set up a controller. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves here so once we've got our overall general settings set up now it's time to look at individual games and how you will set up settings for individual games so let's say for example you've played super mario sunshine and you know that it runs extremely well in the default settings and you want to test out a couple of things so what you do is you hold down on the game itself so super mario sunshine i'll hold down and it will bring up this menu here which will show you the details you can start it with patches set it as the default iso that plays automatically or edit game settings edit cheats or clean clear the game settings as well so if we click edit game settings this will bring up a menu that will show you individual game settings so you have the config and the graphic settings and also you can set up individual controls for the game as well if you're using a controller so if i click the graphic settings it'll now bring up video back end show fps all the shader compilations and stuff like that from before and this is where we set it individually just for this game so if I go to enhancements, go to internal resolution, and then I'll click three times native, that'll put it into 1080p. And then we'll put some anti-aliasing on as well. I'll go with two times anti-aliasing, and I'll go with two times anisotropic filtering just to see how that affects the game. Now, if we go back, we go back again, and then we can launch Super Mario Galaxy in 1080p and see how that runs. And there is Super Mario Sunshine running in 1080p. We're getting 25 frames per second here. So this is Super Mario Sunshine. I've loaded it up 1080p with a couple of extra things on and it's running at 15 frames per second. So that is not very good and we want to change a couple of settings. So what you do is you press the Android back button and that'll bring up this little menu here, which means we can change a couple of things while the game is playing just to fine tune our experience. It really is a fantastic addition to this. It's something that I do a lot on the PC, but I, never been able to do an android and i'm really glad that this is in the emulator itself so press the settings it'll bring up a settings menu and then i go to graphic settings now we can't change the video back end which i've set to vulcan so i can't check if opengl runs better i'd have to come out of the game to check that but we can go to the enhancement section and we can change the internal resolution so it's currently at three times native 1080p so let's change that down to two times native See if that works, 720p, let's take off anti-aliasing and let's take off an isotropic filtering that we put up earlier. We can press back, 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 and we'll go back into the emulator. And then we're now getting a smooth 30 frames per second. So maybe it was the anisotropic filtering. So if I go back again, press the settings and it'll bring up the settings menu. And we go to graphic settings and I'll go to enhancements and let's just try internal resolution 1080p. Let's change it back to three times 1080p, go back and back again. And nope, 1080p, we're getting 25, 23 frames per second there, which isn't bad, but we know we can get 30 at 720 and it's still looking good. So I'll just go back into the graphic settings, go into enhancements, go to internal resolution, 
and I'll just change that back to 720p because that's the one that I think is running fine. I can also mess around with a lot of other things here. So if I want to go back, I can go to the hacks and I can check out to see if skip EFB access from CPU. That sometimes makes games run faster on PC. So I'm going to try it again on here and then store EFB copies to texture only. I'll try that and we'll see what that does to the game. So I'll go back. And it is literally a game of just fine tuning that experience. So you get 30 frames per second or 60 depending on what game it is that you're playing. But that seems to be running fine. Now, we can also go to the control sections and click overlay controls. This is where we can mess around with what controls are on the screen. So let's say you have a controller plugged in. You click toggle controls toggle all and then none of the controls are on the screen so you can play happily with your controller but i don't have a controller plugged in right now i'm gonna get to that toggle more back on so if we go to overlay controls as well we can click adjust controls so you can adjust the opacity that the controls are on the screen so let's change that down to about 20 percent and the scale as well so say if you want them much bigger on the screen you can change them to 200 percent or if you want them just to be a little bit smaller but i got fat thumbs so i need them to be a little bit bigger but as you can see now the controls on the screen they're just a barely viewable and they're a lot smaller than they were before so if we go back again go into the overlay controls adjust controls i'm gonna turn the opacity up and because i got fat thumbs i'm gonna make them a little bit bigger as well also in the overlay controls you can edit where the controls are on the screen. So if you want your thumbstick to be over here for some reason, you can move the thumbstick around. And then when you're done, you can move the Z button, move all the Vs around to wherever you want to put them. That's absolutely bonkers there. And when you're finished, click done. And you can turn the rumble off and on by clicking over the controls. So you can see it's off. We'll turn that back on. And then the final thing, if you've messed it up too much, like I have there, you can just reset the overlay and it will put everything back to where it was before. To get out of the game, you press back and you go to exit emulation. And then just to make sure, I'm going to hold down on Super Mario Much Sunshine, click edit game settings, go to the graphic settings and just make sure that those settings are saved that I enjoyed. So nope, two times 720p. We turn that off we turn that off as well so once you're finished with the game just go into the settings and make all those changes to make sure that they then become the default settings so all of that was turned on and it ran smooth as butter and there we go saved settings for g for super mario sunshine so that's gamecube games and the gamecube controller as far as nintendo wii games go i do not recommend playing any of these without the controller especially games that use a lot of motion controls and things like that you're not going to be playing skyward sword or super mario galaxy just using the touch screen controls you're probably going to be able to play games like kirby's epic yarn or mario kart using the on-screen controls so with Mario Kart, you're probably going to need the classic controller. So I'll show you how to do that now. Same with Kirby's Epic Yarn. So if I open Mario Kart and then I press back, bring up this menu here and then click overlay controls. This is where on the Wii side, we can choose the controller that we use. I'm going to choose the controller. Now this is set to Wii Remote and Nunchuck, but I'm you can use a GameCube controller, which is perfect as well or a classic controller, which some games are perfect with a classic controller. So this is where you will change what type of controller will be on the screen. I'm going to choose classic controller just to show you that. And then back on the overlay controls as well, we can check motion controls. And this is where you can use the device sensors to control the game. So first, let's look at the classic controller. So there is the classic controller on the screen. So if I wanted to use motion controls, I'd go back to overlay controls, click choose controller, and then I'd go with horizontal Wii remote, click OK. So now in theory, as I move my phone to the left and right, and honestly, this isn't a great experience. I don't recommend it, but I'm tilting my phone to the left and to the right. And it is moving the cart at the same time but this is why i recommend using the classic controller or the gamecube controller for games like this especially if you're using touchscreen 
If you're using a controller, it's a completely different experience. So let's say you want to play Super Mario Galaxy 2 anyway, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually change the back end because Super Mario Galaxy 2 doesn't work on Vulcan, well, it doesn't work on my phone. So I'm going to hold down and press Super Mario Galaxy 2, go to edit game settings, go to graphic settings and change the video back end from both Vulcan to OpenGL because I know that works. Again, I'm going to go to enhancements and just make sure that the internal resolution is set to one times native because there's no way this game is running in 1080p. And then I will switch to Super Mario Galaxy and let's have a look. We'll do Galaxy 2. So now it says we need to connect a nunchuck to the player one remote. So if we press back, go to overlay controls, and then choose controller, change it to Wiimote and Nunchuck, and click OK, and it should work. Press A and B at the same time, and there we go. So as you can see, there is no pointer on my screen, so if I go press back, go to the settings, click overlay controls, click motion controls, and then change use device centers without pointer emulation, so I can use the touch screen. If you want to use your device centers for pointer emulation, click use device centers with pointer emulation, but I don't do that because it is it's quite difficult to find where the center is, and you have to keep your phone in a certain position for the pointer to appear, which you kind of have to do anyway, but you'll see in a second. So if we go back to the game, and then I just have to find... If I put my phone where the center is, so hear the little rumble. There's my, there it is. It's appeared here. So I've got the pointer to appear. So I can now use the touchscreen control. That's A, there we go. And that's my Mar touchscreen for Mario. Now the problem is here, if I move it too far like this, it goes away. And the point has disappeared so i have to then bring the pointer back at this point here so let's use the touch screen to start that so super mario galaxy is actually running at 60 frames per second which is very good i can use the touch screens and then i can use the touch to move this around which isn't going to be very good when it comes to messing around with Yoshi later on. So it's definitely a playable experience, and one of the great things is we have shake to spin. If I shake my phone, it will spin. Shake, 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 shake to spin. And if I need the pointer, I have to have my phone in a certain position where the pointer appears on the screen, and I can use the touchscreen controls once that's active. But if I move my phone like this away, then the, the point has disappeared and I can't control it anymore. I have to have my phone in a certain position. It is just very uncomfortable. But if you want to play Super Mario Galaxy like this, then by all means, give it a go. But I highly recommend using a controller instead. And as far as the classic games go, you're going to need a classic controller as well for those. So let's say we're going to play Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click back. Then click overlay controls, find choose controller and change it to the classic controller. Click OK. And there we go. We have our classic controller on our screen. Ready to play Legend of Zelda, a link to the past on Dolphin Emulator. And again, to get out, back, exit emulation. That's it for this video on how to install and set up Dolphin on your Android phone. If you want to know how to set up your controller, then check out my videos and that links will be in the description down below. And also, if you're having issues with performance on your Android phone, then check out my video on Dolphin MMJR2 because that might be better for you, especially if you're using a lower end device and you want to get extra performance over stability. If you found this information useful, then please hit that like button. It really does help this channel grow. Consider subscribing to the channel if you want more videos on emulation and retro games let me know down in the comments which retro games you're going to be playing on dolphin emulator and as always don't do anything i wouldn't do